large uh, story through these uh, characters. For me, the, the first uh, choice, because uh, you can uh, follow some characters like an, a hero, and with your, with your camera, you, you make them like a hero, and, uh, and you can uh, tell uh, uh, a story about uh, what it's like, uh, example, and uh, for me, it's very it's, it's the most important because uh, the character is the most important in the movie, and uh, so uh, it can be a very strange story or very uh, it's depend of mm -hmm. your uh, so that's the choice. So Lucas, um, para mí lo principal en una historia es hablando de documental, ¿no? Is eh, descubrir la pasión de una persona. For me, the most important thing in a documentary would be to find the passion in a in person. A partir de la pasión, eh, empiezo a descubrir que esa persona es diferente a todas las personas en la vida cotidiana, y eso me hace imaginar una historia diferente. Y empiezo a, a imaginar y volver, bueno. Sigo con el tema recurrente de la infancia. Espero que no haya ningún psicólogo por aquí. <risa> okay. Para mí, eh, la pasión. Ellos son. Passion would be the most important thing. Look that. I mean, the passion of the. What character is the same that, that would be the, the most, the strongest point, and that that would lead me to other things. And then coming back again to, to this recurrent theme I was talking about earlier, which was the childhood. I hope there is not a, a single shrimp here, but uh, that, that that would be the the the, the force, the driving force. Yeah. Yeah. Sí. Bueno, y me parece que la eh, vivir con pasión lo que a uno le gusta, lo que a uno lo modifica, es la esencia de la vida y ya con eso yo por lo menos estoy satisfecho. For me, the essence of life is passion, so that that that, that would satisfy. Me. Uh, we, my brother and I, I work with my brother, and we tend to. I'm actually thinking back to sort of how we come to projects, and we tend to choose projects that are financed. Um, <laughs> very different perspectives. Um, and then, secondly, I think that we, which is a big element. I mean, you know, I think it's like it's you know you kind of want to because it's tough with documentary. I mean, with anything, right? But with a documentary, you know, unless you're uh, you know, Michael Moore's a really, you know, big filmmaker to go in and just say, hey, I got a great idea, um, give me money, you know, it, it's, there's too, there's too much supply out there um, for buyers to just, you know, find me, I mean, unless you have a great connection, whatever, something might happen, but, you know, you typically have to go out and develop on your own, and you might be able to find people that would be interested in financing the development, and, but it's a, it's an uphill battle. You know, to come with, and that's why I think there's a ton of documentaries out there that are just friends and family supporting you. You know, you're doing um, um, what's the online thing you can Kickstarter. That's pretty cool. Um, but but then I think also for us, the other factor is where we're uniquely suited. So um, and, and that that's why our list is endless. Otherwise, it would it would be impossible to to put this project together. You know, one of I mean, and going back to what you were saying, one of the big efforts is to to kind of support the whole process, not just show films, but we also have like these workshops we're doing in in called Ambulante Mas Allá, that is little towns, you know, uh, with a, mostly of the population is indigenous, and we go there and train them and show them how to use cameras and do their own film. And we also have a like La Beca Gucci Ambulante, this thing that is not Gucci anymore. In fact, <laughs> no, this might be the last time I said I say that name. Uh, but we we do have a Beca something soon. 
that, uh, that, that uh, pays the, the, the post-production of three projects. And, uh, and, and the idea is to get involved in the whole process because obviously it is tough and, and there, there might be many ways to finance a, a documentary, or not many, but a few more than in Latin America, in Europe or the States. But it's still the same struggle, you know? And if you wait, many times if you wait for the money to come, the story is gone, you know? So it needs to, it needs to come from the inside. And I... Especially for the post-production. <laughs> it's the large part of the budget for a documentary, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, I, I have the feeling that there's the, the documentaries are, are finding an audience, you know, they're, they're starting to be big. You can probably, today you can name a few documentaries you went to watch in a commercial cinema, which probably 15 years ago would have been just if you go to festivals, you know. Uh, and things are changing. In fact, there's fiction films that now they, you know, you, you get hired in a film and they tell you, ah, but we're gonna shoot documentary style. <laughs> you're like, really? <laughs> With your five million dollars, you're gonna shoot documentary style <laughs> in order to make it look cool, you know? And, and so it tells you that things are, you know, changing. <laughs> we actually, we showed our film at the um, Zurich Film Festival in Switzerland, and we're told that over half of the ticket sales in the cinemas in Switzerland are for documentaries. Um, that's just like public desire, like they just go and they like document, I think that's pretty wild. <laughs> well, and I haven't told the story, uh, but uh, I, I was sitting in London at the London Film Festival with one of the programmers of the festival that was saying how much she loved the film El Ambulante. And uh, she entered in a whole discussion on, on, she was trying to convince everyone at the festival that it was a fiction film and not a documentary. So it would be part of the, the big night events, you know? And uh, so there is that, you know, there is that contradiction. What's what? I mean, I guess it's just, just good and bad film, you know? Wow. Gracias a Dios es un documental y no una ficción. Parece un... Un personaje, espero que todos se queden a verla, ¿no? Uh, well, I hope everyone stays to, to watch it, but uh, thank God it's a, it's, a, it's a documentary and not a fiction. Parece un personaje de ficción, pero por suerte es un documental. He looks, to, well, he resembles a, a fiction character, but he is very much real. So one of the, 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 the title of our panel today, I believe, is Documentaries Without Borders. And one of the kind of common themes when talking about the impact of globalization on how culture is made is this fairly mythic idea that, that individual local place vanishes, that we become part of a, a constantly, instantly reproduced global village, uh, and that the local becomes less important. And what's really struck me about the films last night and also the films that we're going to see tonight is how important the local is um, and how important not just the local but the tiniest locals, the tiniest places, places that are off the map uh, in many ways. Uh, and I'm just wondering if, if you guys could talk a little bit about the power of place or the importance of local place in a global conversation and in a global market. I definitely can say something that uh, I, I, I truly believe that when you're specific is when you can reach the most, you know. A very specific and intimate story can tell you much more about who you are, uh, you know, no matter where it happens, you know, because it's with, with the honesty when you can really connect, you know, when you... When, when you feel you're trying to be pleased, you know? You know, uh, in film, when they write, they say, oh, okay, but this is good for this audience, and then the poster is gonna be like this for this mm -hmm. audience. And, and when you're watching a documentary, and when, when you have the feeling you just opened the window of someone and, and got into his house and started to look at him, then you start to, to, to relate to that or to see how different you are, but it's, it's a very introspective process, you know? And I truly believe that if you stick to be specific, is when suddenly you go out and you realize you're not alone. You know, you realize everyone shares the same issues you have, and you find an audience. You know? I mean, there's like there's a, the great moment in your film that we saw last night. You know, 
where uh, the two young boys are talking, the, the band is about to go to Europe for the first time. And the two young boys are talking about what this Europe place is. And they say, well, one of them says, uh, I'm getting this, I'll get it wrong, but something like, one of them says, oh, it's a place where they don't let everybody in. Uh, and they say, what do you mean? He said, well, that's what Europe is. They don't let everybody in. Only some people come in. And then the other says, I think Europe exists so that we can compare ourselves to it. Um, and it was this incredibly powerful moment about just how, in the midst of the global, the global, how these local ideas about nation, about culture, still persist, that, that these films bring to life. Yes, but uh, especially in, in Kinshasa, you have, it's, uh, to go to Europe is a dream for everybody because it's like a gel, this country, like many uh, countries in the world. But uh, they have a t TV in uh, their uh, a wooden house. Everywhere you have TV, so they have an image of uh, Europe, USA. And uh, they have another bad image, it's uh, how we show them in the uh, European TV, for example. So they have, um, they have a, a bad uh, experience. They, 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 uh, they don't like to, to meet people with uh, white people with camera in the ghetto, you know, because uh, they imagine it's to, uh, it's to speak about war, about misery, about AIDS, about... So, uh, so to work with musicians, it was like a key, a key to, uh, to, to work in Kinshasa. We had like two movies about musicians, and, <laughs> and it's... <laughs> And after this uh, sequence, uh, all the band uh, travel in Europe, and it's funny to have uh, their real vision about that because uh, at the end, for af after many phantasms about Europe, in fact, when uh, they, they, they were here in Europe, it was like it's only that. <laughs> so uh, and it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this issue of the local or of the power of place in documentary? Hieronimo just told me one. Uh, okay. he, he came here <laughs> and said he likes the, the power of USC and that uh, he wants to study here. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you really think doing that in front of everyone is going to guarantee it? <laughs> I hope so, because I don't have the money to pay for it. <laughs> well done, well done. I think we need a documentary.